Right, well, here we are set up in uh, camp. I've brought the uh, MLD Cuban poncho uh, this time because I'd heard the forecast was going to be not only good but exceptional, exceptionally good. So it seemed uh, like a you know good opportunity to give it a go. This this business of me taking a while or two settle into my day walks or, or night walks like this. It's um, obviously not having Bess around doesn't help so that's one thing but even when I had Bess I was still a bit like it so but Bess isn't the complete uh, thingy um, it's really just when I'm either by myself or potentially with someone that I don't know which is virtually next to never quite honestly um, that I that I ever really, you know, suffer from sort of homesickness. As I say, when I was with uh, Chris the other week, I felt it when I arrived in Moffat. So for the the Monday afternoon when I was in Moffat, I must admit I felt a little homesick then. And I must admit, for a tiny amount of time on the Tuesday morning. But once I set off with Chris, as you'll know from the part two of the video, in fact from part one of the video, once I set off, you know, I, I, I was fine. And uh, I didn't really, it was, I didn't think of home at all, I, I, I did. But it didn't really well it wasn't really a problem at all and of course when I used to walk with Sue who some of you will know many of you probably won't but Sue was my wife and sadly she died nearly three years ago it would be three years ago this August the 15th of cancer and uh it's quite easy to to find my story if you haven't already found it or my diaries because there's a link on the YouTube channel that takes you to my PBase photo site and well you can't miss it from there um, and of course you know I would I never camped with so that only started last year the camping but I could walk with Sue all day around Dartmoor or I could go to Scotland or the Lake District or Florida which are the places that we did you know we're going back uh, quite a long time now um, and I never I never once missed home so it just shows that if I'm with the person that I either know really well or of course if I'm in love with the person then it, it doesn't rear its head it's only really if I'm by myself and I really only notice it in the morning and maybe early afternoon I certainly noticed once I was heading up towards Ryder Hill now whether that's because at that point I was starting to come south and theoretically heading back even though of course I'm not heading back tonight so whether that was one reason you know I don't know um, and also it was a mid you know sort of early mid afternoon it was about two o'clock and I noticed on my day walks when I was doing them that uh, I would be quite miserable first thing on the walks but as the walk progressed you know I, I brightened up a lot mind you that was a lot nearer to Sue dying as well I'm not I'm not miserable now I just have this funny feeling in here that I'm missing home but as I say once I'm about halfway around 
and I've settled down like this, I, f I feel f not too bad now. I wouldn't say perfect, but not bad at all. I, I'm settled and relaxed and certainly happy, more than happy to stay here, you know, for the night now. It's got quite a good pitch, so I'll show you around in a minute. And I think that also explains why in the early part of my walks I tend to not do an awful lot of videoing. I tend to want, by myself particularly, just to want to keep walking to sort of get to that point of where I'm either starting to come back or sort of early afternoon. Because every time I get to that by myself, I start to, things start to settle down and everything. I don't know if that makes any sense to anybody or whether I just sound stupid, but that's what it is and I just thought I'd uh, just share that, uh, that thought with you. I missed Bess again uh, when I was uh, eating, or just after I'd eaten, because uh, as I say, she always looks, licks out of the packet. So I must admit, it seemed uh, that seemed quite strange not being able to give that to her. It's a little bit annoying. I don't mean I don't mean annoying. That's sometimes I use the wrong word. So forgive any wrong words like that. So annoying isn't the right word. But she seems a perfectly fit, able dog. And I take her for a short walk around Cheddar and obviously her normal daily walks. And at the moment I wouldn't know that she had this uh, cancerous sarcoma around her spleen and quite honestly I don't think she knows I'm sure she still doesn't know anything about it and in fact she hasn't even collapsed in two or three weeks or more it was three weeks ago that I was camping last and I'm sure she hasn't collapsed in that time I think it was she collapsed twice before that so she hasn't even collapsed in nearly, nearly four weeks. So it's, uh, it's most strange, but there is something there that shouldn't be there. I've seen the scan and I've felt it, but unfortunately it just is too, I, I'm doing the right thing, even though it feels like I'm doing the wrong thing. You know, she's such a healthy, seems such a healthy animal and when I leave her with her mum and dad, you know, you can tell that she wants to come, but it's just, uh, you know, it's, it's just too, too risky to do, and it wouldn't be right to bring her in case anything went wrong. But it, it, it is, that's why it's annoying, because on the face of it, she seems perfectly healthy, and you'd think, yeah, she'd probably be fine. But, you know, I can't risk bringing her in case anything happened or I exacerbated anything. So, I suppose cancer is an annoying thing. But anyway, we'll uh, get off that subject. <laughs> get off that subject. And we'll... Uh, I've made another cup of tea. So I'll have that in a minute.